Hello everyone, this is Zook, and I have a really, really bad f***ing cold. I, uh, have been sleeping with the air conditioning on since it's really hot here, and, uh, today I woke up with fever and a sore throat and a really bad cough. So I just want to apologize in advance for any, uh, coughing or sneezing or blowing of noses that are likely to occur. In any case, before we begin, I have a small announcement to make. Apparently now I have a Facebook page facebook.com slash stuff and also a Twitter page twitter.com stuff coincidentally um, so if you'd like to follow me and uh, find out interesting uh, facts uh, from my daily existence uh, go right ahead and that was it for the announcement here we go now I started off my drawing as I usually do with the light outline the basic shapes and all that good stuff um, I had made a couple of sketches before getting to the main one just to get my hand used to how the Overlord is like and the shape it has and its members and all that but I found it a rather simple creature to draw because in essence it's just a hot air balloon with uh, with legs and that's about it. Uh, the only reference I used was uh, a picture of the actual Overlord just to see like how many limbs it has and how many um, spikes it has on its back or if it has spikes because I wasn't exactly sure how the unit looks like. I mean I play, I've been playing StarCraft for ever since it came out basically and I still don't know what these units really look like because I don't sit around and look at them in detail but anyway after the outline I just get straight to detailing the carapace. Um, I'm gonna try and do all my drawings on vellum from now on because as a medium I like it more than paper. I'm fairly convinced now that it's more pleasant to draw on it. But uh, the only downside to it is that as you can see the graphite reflects in the lamp way more. However I did try to keep the paper at an angle as much as possible so as to not uh, completely obscure the what I was doing. Um, shading wise I just go with the basic carapace that I used on the bailing as well and uh, give it a few imperfections here and there just to just to give it a bit of randomness um, the overlord has a collar of bumps or skin bumps or armor I'm not sure what it is it looks like a, a pearl necklace around its neck and it's basically it's covered in it under its armor like it has it around its limbs as well and uh, the way I draw that is I start off with the tube shading and then I section it and try and um, define the individual sh sections with uh, a coarse shadow following the contour and that's basically all there is to it now every time you see me go back to things I've already done it means I've taken a break and came back and uh, saw that there was something wrong with it as I've mentioned in the previous video, it's very important to take breaks. Now I did a bit of improvising on the Overlord's face. Its nose isn't exactly identical, but who the hell wants to make it identical anyway? I just tried to do it my own way and uh, sort of stick to the original, but give it a, a personal touch like I always try to do. For example, the carapace on its uh, head wasn't didn't look so separate from the rest of the head, but I decided to make it so just to to give it a more armored look. As you can see, I'm using the 4B pencil here. Well, you can't see it, but I'm telling you, because the 7B was uh, is getting close to uh, me being done with it. It's it's almost over. Uh, now the two pincers on its on its face aren't there in the original. In the original, like the actual 3D character model has to a bunch of horns, I think, or it looks like horns. But I decided to turn the horns into a couple of pincers you can use to shovel uh, whatever they eat into their mouths. Uh, now you can see there the little bumps I was talking about that are that surround the main limbs. I just define each one of them in particular and then give them an overall shadow just to make them like seem unified. The Overlord also has two larger pincers on its uh, its chest I think it is or basically shoulders if you can call it that and um, the way I started drawing these or the way I taught myself to draw these was I looked at the skeleton of a human forearm as some of you might know, it's uh, it's not one bone but two, 
and I tried to replicate that in all insect-like limbs that I've uh, I've drawn. So basically, there's one shadow in the middle to separate the two bones, and then you draw whatever texture you want on top of that to give the impression of skin. Now, the way I did these uh, two main pincers or claws, I tried to improvise them completely. Like I didn't look at the uh, the original image much because um, I just wanted to do something original by myself and if you've ever drawn um, insect type armor or uh, or limbs you should know that there's never like a, sh a completely sharp transition between the armor and the uh, the body itself like if you take a look at uh, crab pincers or lobster pincers you'll see that there's a few extra layers there between the uh, in the joints uh, basically transitioning the armor from one piece to another so what I'm saying is don't draw it like you would a human armor like a metal armor where it's just one piece then one piece then uh, you know it's attached with straps and everything this is all organic so it has to it has to be attached on itself and on flesh and on bone so it, the transitions have to be smooth What I liked about this uh, this character was that there it has a lot of spikes and horns, and uh, I really like drawing those, as uh, you might have heard me say before. They're just so easy to do, and they always look good. I tried to uh, improvise a lot of bumps and stuff on his pincer just to uh, to not make it symmetrical to the other one, because in uh, in the fantasy world, and sometimes even in nature, not all limbs are symmetrical. And they don't have to have the same exact texture, just like you know, you don't have the ex same exact uh, hairs on your arms or moles on your hands or whatever. So it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be a mirrored effect. It seems more natural if uh, if there are different imperfections on each limb. I'm just drawing its legs now. I uh, didn't really know how many legs it had before. <laughs> it was funny. I didn't know if it has three or four or five. Who knows? It doesn't have to make sense in the in the world of StarCraft too. But I try to draw each limb um, the way I mentioned before, like make a shadow in the middle and then define each of the separating separated bones just to make it look like it has a, a very very um, obvious texture a very deep grooves and very um, a lot of bumps and a lot of uh, <coughs> indentations and all that By the way, you might notice th these little breaks in speech sometimes. It's uh, me pausing the video to blow my nose because uh, snot is dripping down my face. So I try to not blow my nose in the mic because that would be highly unpleasant. Now I'm drawing the legs in the back. I try to not go into as much detail with them as I do with the ones in the front because um, the drawing seems pretty cluttered already. Like there's a lot of overlapping limbs with the same texture. So if you look at it from a distance, you don't really know like what's in the back, what's in the front. Uh, does it have three legs in its stomach? And uh, you know, it's just confusing to the viewer. So the leg in the very back, I didn't even bother detailing it. I just made uh, just a shadow over it on the contour, and that's it. Now for the the sacks on its side, what I did here was. I did a very small uh, impression with my pencil and then I took my blending stump and defined all the little uh, bumps and warts and uh, sacks it has on its on its sides. And this worked out way better than uh, sitting there and detailing each and every one of them with my pencil. So just after an, ini an initial pass with the blending stump I went in with the pencil to pretty much darken the uh, the grooves in between the bumps as you can see there and it it made it look really nice and made it actually look almost real. I was very proud of myself for the the sex. And I made then a, a third pass with a blending stump just to further soften it because, um, as you might know, the Overlord's uh, sides aren't very sharp and armored. They're basically air sacks. And um, I'm just drawing the cast shadows of the spikes just to give it a sense of realism. I'm going to go in with my eraser after this and um, drawing the highlights on the spikes because the light is supposed to be coming from the top left so 
it, they have to, to show that. Now, as you can see, my little bumpy texture turned out pretty well here. And now I'm just shading in the sack on the very side. I drew in a vein there just for extra effect. The way you draw veins on uh, in these types of drawings is you basically erase the contour with a, a sharp sharp edge of the eraser and then you shade in just the intersections or the the points where the um, eraser, uh, not the eraser, <laughs> what the fuck, the points where, where the veins branch out. Like you never should you should never draw the entire contour of the vein because that's only done in comic books and it would look bad. It looks amateurish. I mean, hell, I'm an amateur, but uh, I don't want to leave and see more amateur than I already am. So just erase the, the shape of the vein and then just shade in like the little uh, corners. As you can see there, I'm doing the highlights with my eraser. The pen eraser is very useful for that, but uh, as I mentioned, I'm waiting for my electric eraser, which will be godlike in situations like this. I'm just finishing up the drawing now, doing its little tail in the back, and just the extra antennae or whatever it has, the uh, spikes and uh, hairs and whatnot, and that's it. I'm. Uh, it was really fun drawing it. It was gave me a lot of room for improv and coming up with my own uh, stuff. So I hope you liked it and I'll see you next time. Bye.